to render a skybox using cycles, first start with the default scene and add a UV sphere. It will generally appear inside the default cube. Check that that's happened. And then using add UV sphere properties, change the size of the object by typing a value in the size option. Make sure the sphere is much larger than the default cube. Then switch to front view and remove perspective. Select the object and enter edit mode. Deselect everything and then using border select, draw an area across the upper half of the mesh. This selection needs to be detached. So from the mesh menu, select vertices, separate, selected. This detaches the selected elements to a separate independent object that can be selected and edited on its own. Select the upper dome just created, toggle edit mode, select all, and from the mesh menu, UV unwrap and select unwrap to create a basic UV map. Toggle edit mode and repeat the process for the lower dome, select all, UV unwrap, select unwrap. Once done, toggle out of edit mode, select the cube, toggle into edit mode for that, make sure to select all, and then from the mesh menu, edges, mark seams. This will mark each edge as a seam so that each face can be unwrapped as an independent UV island. So once the mesh is seam marked, select all, mesh, UV unwrap, unwrap and that creates a basic UV map for the cube. Once mapped, switch the 3D view for the UV image editor and from the header click image open. In the file browser that appears, select the bitmaps that need to be loaded. Repeat the process for each image that has to be loaded in and used. In this example one for sky and one for ground. Check that they are loaded and then for the final image create a generated data slot from image new image to access new image properties, type a new name, change the size relative to the final rendered image, which will be a series of tiles, select a type and then OK. Switch back to the 3D view and from the choose layout option, select UV editing to split screen between the UV image editor and the 3D view. Select the cube and enter edit mode Select all, click the browse image to be linked button and assign the previously generated checker image to the cube. Redo the cube's UV map to make sure that each face or UV is properly assigned and distributed over the image. This is relatively important because the environment map or the skybox is going to be baked from this cube as opposed to rendering the scene as would be done using Blender internal. Once the cube is image mapped, continue on and repeat the process for both domes. So toggle into edit mode, select all, and then in the image editor, select and assign the image appropriate for each mesh object. Once the images are assigned, toggle the layout from UV editing back to default. One final adjustment to make before moving on to materials is to ensure that the upper dome is slightly larger and overlaps the lower. From the view menu, open the properties panel and increase the X and Y dimensions values of the upper dome so the mesh is slightly larger than the lower. Then using the blue handle of the widget, manipulate the two objects so they overlap. Once done, it's then time to move on to editing the materials. Swap the Timeline Editor for the Node Editor and change the size of the view so more workspace is available. Then from the upper menu, switch to Cycles Render. Select the upper dome, then Material Properties, then New to generate a default set of nodes that appear in the Node Editor workspace. Give the new material a name. And then from the Add menu, Add an image texture node and an emission node and also a texture coordinates node. 
These three nodes form the basis of what is the equivalent of shadeless material. Disconnect diffuse from material output, reorganize the workspace as needed, left click drag each node, and set the 3D view to texture before assigning one of the preloaded images to the image texture node, which will appear in the 3D view. Connect texture coordinates to image texture, image texture to emission, and emission to material output. To view these changes in the 3D view, switch to material display mode or render display mode. Note that when editing materials in cycles, certain properties don't display if the 3D view is in texture mode. For example, the strength value of the emission node has no effect in texture mode, but it does in material or rendered display mode. Once a material is set up, in Material Properties, click the plus button to duplicate the current material. Reassign the original material, then select the lower dome and assign the new duplicate. Give it a new name, then again change the image texture node and the bitmap that's associated with it, using one of the images loaded previously. Then from the Node Editor's Add menu, place a Mix Shader node, Drag the nodes around as necessary to make room. Note that dropping a node between connected nodes will join all of them together into a chain automatically. And then finally add a transparency node to the group and connect it to the mix shader, which should also have an incoming connection from the image texture node. This activates the image based alpha channel for alpha transparency on the material. Connection order to the mix shader is important. The transparency node should be the first node connected to the mix shader and its shader input ports with emission connected below. As for the image texture node connection, alpha output should be connected to FAC input on the mix shader. To set up the cube, in Material Properties, click the Use Nodes button. This will create a set of default nodes in the Node Editor, to which the Image Texture node can be added and assigned the previously generated checker image. Reorganize the nodes to make room if necessary, and to the group, add a Glossy node, which will then need to be, be connected to the Material Output node so disconnect diffuse before doing so. Then finally change the node's roughness value to zero. What this does is change the amount of noise present in the render. For an environment map it should be set to zero. So the resulting image is free from noise. The final step before rendering is to prep each mesh by applying smoothing and a subdivision surface modifier to increase the structural density of the object. To smooth each mesh, select them in turn and from the tool shelf, click the Smooth button. To assign subdivide, select the object and from Modifier Properties, select the Subdivision Surface Modifier from the list. For each dome, the upper and lower, set the View property to 4 iterations. This significantly increases the density of the mesh. So again, repeat the process so the lower dome is selected and from Modifier Properties, select the Subdivision Surface Modifier and set View to 4 iterations. Similarly for the cube, select it and from Modifier Properties, add a Subdivision Surface Modifier and this time set the view to 5 or 6 iterations. This will turn the cube into a sphere. Previewing the scene in rendered mode at this point, we'll show the background reflected in the glossy material applied to the sphere. The final step is to then bake the environment map. From Render Properties, scroll down to the Bake subsection, set Glossy Direct as the Bake Type, select the cube, which is now a sphere thanks to the Subdivision Surface modifier, and then click Bake. A progress bar will appear in the Info header across the top of the application, disappearing when the process completes. Although the image is assigned to the sphere in the 3D view, to view the actual map, 
access the UV image editor by swapping one of the views or changing the layout to UV editing. If the image is not initially visible, click the Browse Image to be Linked button in the UV image editor and select it from the list. It will appear in place of the previously created generated image. Looking at the cube in edit mode, each face is mapped to a particular area of the map and can be reorganized and manipulated as an independent separate island of the UV. This means potentially the environment map can be baked in any particular order or orientation. To save the file, from the UV image editor, click Image, Save as Image. This opens the file browser, enter a name, select a lossless or compression free format before then clicking save. Blender will pause momentarily as the data is written to disk, return to the previous screen with the file saved ready for use externally.